Um, so please, everybody, mute your your microphones um, if you can. And this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's order, executive order 7.B. And then I'm ready to start recording. So looks like we are recording. Uh, if you need to talk, uh, if you have a keyboard in front of you, you could just hit the space bar when you're muted and that'll allow you to um, unmute yourself and uh, talk and give input. So with that, I'd like to begin the meeting for the Town of Weathersfields Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission. Uh, this is a public meeting. It's Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. And um, looks like John just joined us, which is good. And we are using a virtual meeting platform in accordance with the, the governor's executive order. Uh, so at this point in time, we have a public comment portion of the meeting. So anyone from the public can address the commission at this time. And I just asked that um, Derek, did anybody reach out to you ahead of the meeting with any? Not to uh, state any comments. I uh, had okay. some people that are in attendance to listen, um, but no one has to state anything. Okay, so we don't have any, sensing there's no public comments, uh, we can move on to the public meeting. Well, we can actually move on to new business because we don't have any public hearings. We don't have any public meeting business or we don't have any old business. Uh, so we have new business. We have application number 730-21. Uh, it's John Mikowski, 135 Elm Street, parcel number 266-001. It's an application for a building addition within a regulated area in floodplain. And with us here tonight, do we have the applicant to describe the, the project? Yep, how you doing? John here. Hi, John. I thought, I cam- I thought I'd turn my camera on, but it doesn't seem to be. Oh, there it is. Okay. Derek hey, can everyone. help you with um, actually putting up the um, your little site plan on the screen so we can all see it and you can kind of describe it. Yeah. Give I us can, a description uh, of the project. Yeah, I can do that. Here we go. Share screen. Oh, uh, so it's host disabled. Okay. So, John, I had gotten a, um, a new plan just uh, earlier this morning. Do you, want, yep. do you want me to put up that one and you can discuss it? Just let the commission members know you, you have the previous plan. I had comments, they just resubmitted. I haven't had time to review it yet, um, but he can certainly go through and explain it and then we can we can talk about it after. Sure thing, yeah, you can put the, the latest version of the one that I uh, okay. supplied today. Okay, so there it is. So this is the um, site plan on my property, 135 Elm Street. Um, it is located in uh, flood zone AE, which is the 100 year floodplain. Um, it is also currently zoned agricultural. Um, so the proposed work, you can kind of see this um, cross hatched area. That's the south facing side of the property. Um, our, our plan is to build a main living level master addition here. Um, it's going to be up on piers. It will be uh, the, the finished floor will be a minimum one foot above base flood elevation. Um, I think we have provisions to put it up actually even higher than that, but um, I think as per this plan, it, it shows one foot. Um, this is the latest drawing that my surveyor just added some things um, per I believe the town's request. Um, So you can see in the bottom here, just below the crosshatch area, this is a a rain garden. So that's gonna be utilized to mitigate, um, you know, collection of water and allow that to uh, permeate back into the soil. Um, There's a, you know, further detail lower on the page. Um, It it shows six inch minimum um, and the the materials that will be used. as far as soil conditions and loam and the um, you know proper mulch types and those and those sorts of things, it's all detailed in here. Um, like I said, the foundation is going to be on piers. It will uh, be crushed stone underneath to allow flood water to pass under. Um, just trying to mitigate the actual uh, penetration into the flood zone itself. Um, 
that's that's the that's the gist. Um, there is this this kind of bump out you see at the bottom there, the the property line. Um, with the approvals that need to happen, um, once everything is approved, pe you know, pending approval, uh, we are going to purchase this piece of property here from uh, David Anderson of Anderson Farms. Um, I also submitted the um, copy of the contract for that. So we do have, um, you know, legal rights to this piece here. Um, once everything's approved, then that contract becomes valid. And, you know, I have the lawyer in place to switch over this property line and the lot line adjustment done by the associates. Um, so that's, you know, the explanation of this kind of bump out here. Um, and we did that to minimize this property line um, variance here. It's, you know, it still needs a variance seeing as it's zoned agricultural. Um, so we need that minimum of 25 feet. So we do have a meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals on the 22nd to um, look at this lot line adjustment and look at these variances, which are listed on this plan. Um, and, you know, a little bit up, there's a there's a blurb. Is it, it might not be this plan. It might be the one that we submitted to, to the ZBA. Um, showing the um, the variances requested. Oh, oh no, it is here, I'm sorry. If, you, if you're if you looking at this, if you'd scroll to the right, you can see um, the variances requested. That's about it. This other, um, on this plan too, there's another cross hatched area um, and that is for construction entrance, um, you know, to allow, you know, whatever, lumber delivery and all those things to, uh, to the site so we can, you know, we're not dealing with traffic on the road and those kinds of things to get everything, uh, you know, we don't want to block the road, obviously. So we're going to do that. John, I think that. John, do you have Derek's March 12th, 2021 memo that had, um, I want to say several comments? Uh, I'm not I think sure. It had I 10 comments. Let me, um, let me pull so I was going to ask you if you have that, just to kind of, you know, run run down that list one by one and describe what's been done to address each of those. Sure thing. Let me see if I can grab that. It should be in one of these one of these emails. Oh. Oh, actually, good idea, Eric. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have it here. Can you, can you see it on your screen at all, John? I can, the, I can see it now. Yeah, I can see that here. So I don't know if you want to kind of describe what you did to to revise the plan. Okay, so the, the first comment there, um, the compensatory storage, um, that is what um, Jim Dutton had done with the uh, the rain garden. So that's the um, six inches by, I think it's 20 feet by, I can look, let me see, hold on, I'm looking at the other screen here. So that was a depression just, just south of the proposed addition? Correct, so it's a six inch depression um, it's three feet by third 23 feet or so. Kind of zoom in on it. So that's that rain garden is what Jim Dunn had come up with to um, make up for that compensatory storage on that um, first comment there. Okay. So that'll be, you know, the removal of the six inches of soil for across that area 
um, and then building this rain garden to to these the specs shown at the bottom there. So it'd be um, six inches minimum of shredded aged hardwood mulch, and then the new grade of four to one slope into that six inch depression, and then the um, the 30 inches of um, soil. So planting soil of 30, no, consisting of 35 to 60% sand, 30 to 55% silt, uh, 10 to 25% clay. Um, so that's, you know, something that we'll confirm and that's that, that um, piece there for comment one. Okay. And then for comment two, would, would those conditions be acceptable to you? Um, yeah, I think that's fair and logical. Um, the only, I'm not thrilled about the placement of this, um, but I assume that if we place this somewhere else on the property, um, it would satisfy the town's requirements. So this is where he, you know, he thought we should place it, which is okay. Um, but they do do a lot of um, farming and they, you know, their tractor comes through here, you know, on their, on their property. Um, so I was thinking I could, you know, kind of work that into a maybe a more decorative bed toward the front of the addition. Um, but this is, you know, fine. I, I'm not upset about it at all. So. Okay. And do you see comment three? I see that, yep. Uh, excuse me, if Derek is talking, I can't hear him. Oh, yeah, Derek, you're muted. I didn't notice that. Um, yeah, okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I was reading that um, thing, and uh, Jim did provide um, that information about the impervious area. Um, it, is, it is on the drawing here. Okay. So we have the pre-development and post-development and the change of, of what that is going to be. Um, it's, it's listed there, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm unfortunately not a uh, engineer or civil engineer, so. Um, yeah, I was muted. I, I was saying that uh, he did add the table that I was looking for. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, so it is there. I see it there. And, and yeah. he, he did address comment four with the Southern property line. Um, comment number five was related to me just asking for how they were going to access the site. It looks like they're going to put in a, a, a construction entrance coming off Elm Street. So I just I'll review that with the detail. Material stockpiles, that's our standard type of comment to have erosion controls around them. Um, I think there were some trees maybe in the vicinity that I wasn't clear if they were going to be saved or moved. I don't know, maybe yeah, Jonathan, you could speak to that. Yeah, so there's, you know, he just showed that silt fence there um, for the barrier. And then there is, there was a tree existing where this um, addition is going to go. It actually uh, broke in one of those snowstorms we had um, a year, year and a half, two years ago, probably. So that tree has actually been removed. Um, it, was, it was dying. Uh, and then there is another tree toward that, where that mirror stone is. There's another tree there. I'm hoping to keep that uh, where it is. Um, if it has to, you know, be, be removed to satisfy, you know, some, some to get whatever we need to do, then we'll make provisions to do that. Uh, but that tree I am going to try to save. It's, it's, you can see that existing mirror stone at the bottom corner of the drawing. 
Um, it's right right near that. So, and then there's some rose bushes and things planted out front, which we'll have to remove for the construction driveway. Um, that's not a you know big deal. Those are easily replanted, or you know if the town doesn't want them there, we we won't replant them. That's not the, not something I'm attached to. So. Um, okay, so I uh, anticipate starting completion dates. I, I, I didn't check the plan to see that or, or the legend uh, or these notes, um, yeah. but those are pretty simple. Yeah, it's on here. So, um, you know, Jim had stated the anticipated start is June of 2021. Anticipated completion is September 21, uh, 2021. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much where we're in. I'm hoping I can get some of these things, you know, approved and the sooner everything gets approved and straightened out um, the sooner we'll start so that's that's all but definitely hoping to be completed by um, by the fall time and then Derek did you have any other comments? No, um, but as I said, this just came in, so I really haven't had a chance to, to look at okay. it in detail. So, you know, what we've done in these instances in the past is if you look, if you're going to approve it, just approve it with the condition they address my memo, which it looks like most of that's done. And I'll just verify that, um, you know, after the, after the meetings over this week to, to confirm that and then move, move on uh, from there. Yeah, and then we'd also, also have to add um, from comment number two, the, the two uh, conditions of the approval that there's the, the follow on additions. I mean, um, follow on uh, approvals that he would have to get. Yeah, okay. Does anybody have any questions? No, no questions. It appears that uh, the applicant has attempted to minimize uh, the effects of a possible flood by having that building raised up and he's taking care of the flood storage issue, which is really our primary concern, I think. Okay. Do we have a, a motion to approve with the, um, the condition of the uh, approvals from the the zoning board of appeals, well, the variance and also the the land transfer as well. I'll make that motion, Jim. Okay, and then the other condition would be to satisfy all the Derek's comments too. So moved. I also include that. Okay, and do we have a second on that? Yeah. So that's Lou. Yes. It's all in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? So that passes. Did you get all that, Derek? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let me get my agenda back up again. So good luck, John. You can drop off for the meeting if you'd like. All right, appreciate it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around and see you know what else goes, but uh, I'm gonna okay. mute myself. Thank, thanks everyone for listening. I appreciate your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, so moving on to the Conservation Commission business portion of the meeting. We have referral number 21-01. It's from the town of Weathersfield, uh, Middletown Avenue, parcel number 272-007. It's a referral for discussion and recommendation to the town council for sale of town property. So Derek, do you want to give us a little description of what what this is and what you know to date? Yes, let me um, let me just pull up plan while I'm talking uh, that was submitted with the application. Um, so this is a, a town owned parcel located uh, south of I-91 and east of Middletown Avenue um, down near the Rocky Hill town line. It is a, it's a landlocked parcel the town owns. It, it was purchased from DOT um, almost 50 years ago. And the way the deed was written um, when it was purchased was that the, we're not allowed access off of state property. 
Um, the remaining properties surrounding this one are all privately owned. Um, there are, I think, maybe three, two, two to three different owners that own properties around here. So it's really not very accessible to the town um, as it currently stands. So uh, <clears throat> there was uh, a, you know, when it was sold, there was a uh, restriction that it be remain open space, uh, which it has. It is a uh, floodplain, a lot of wetlands uh, in the area. Uh, town council was, was considering sale. Uh, as you can see, there were a couple offers made that are in your packet. Um, I included also the PZC, uh, Planning Zoning Commission, meeting minutes from a few weeks ago because they discussed the same, the same um, uh, offer that we have here and, uh, and options for it. So Town Council was referring it to Inland Wetlands being the Conservation Commission as well, uh, just to get your, uh, your recommendations on, you know, if the property is going to be sold, um, you know, what restrictions should remain or, or might be needed. Um, to, to maintain what you feel is the, uh, the intended use of the property as an open space. So with that, we can open up for discussion. Did everybody get a chance to review the, the materials that were submitted? Yeah, um, I did. I, I actually saw some of the uh, restrictions and uh, also saw that the maintenance by both groups, but um, is going to be is going to be good. And I and I think we just keep that the way they are. I don't think there's additional restrictions, or I don't think we want to um, cut any of those out. Um, that's just my cursor review of it. Okay. Um, you know, I took a look at the information that was provided and, you know, considered also what we're about here in pres preservation or conservation of open space. You got that big restriction on the original deed, so it's got to be maintained as open space. Um, the issue is kind of like, it seems like the uh, Great Meadows Conservation Trust is going to, they say, leave it naturally. And it sounds like the, the game club uh, at least is going to do something with the plantings and things like that. So if we only consider those two, uh, I guess we got to consider which, let's say use for lack of a better term, uh, kind of fits in with our goals. You know, the other alternative um, is to leave it owned by the town. Um, I think we're that, that does seem like we're going to go that way, but it is another alternative if we're not happy with what these other two potential buyers are going to do. Um, I, I would also point out that I don't think it's a question of the money that we might get out of it that's the key issue. The key issue is preservation and conservation of open space. That's our mission. And that's what we should be making the recommendation based on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and one of my concerns too, looking at the original deed from the conveyance from the state of Connecticut was the, the open space limitation. Um, my only concern is that that be propagated to the next deed to make sure that the, um, you know, if we do sell it, open space uh, restriction, you know, that the land remain as open space and that, that runs with the land. I just want to make sure that that um, remains. Does anybody else have any other comments? Well, the other only other thing that I, I would point out uh, from the uh, plan and zoning meeting is where uh, Peter Gillespie, uh, you know, said either organization that's proposed to buy it, uh, they said they'd be excellent stewards for the work. Uh, they've done things like that for many years. Uh, and kind of in conjunction with that, there is an item in the 2013 Plan of Conservation Development that kind of indicates these are the types of organization that specifically says Great Meadows Trust as an example that we should be working with or we will work with uh, in order to preserve or uh, develop these types of uh, places.
one question I had for Derek was procedurally being, this is one of the first ones that, that I've done. I don't know about if anybody else has made a recommendation like this. What do we typically do? Like, do we, do we vote to approve the sale or do we just, you know, compile all of our thoughts and those go over to, to town council? I would suggest voting on making a positive referral to town council with, with recommendations, such as what's been discussed as maintaining open space and things of that nature. Um, okay. I know planning and zoning went through that process too. They, they did a vote and made that positive approval to, to sell the property. Um, you know, they were looking at it from a little bit different perspective. So that, that was what I would recommend we do. Okay, so we would just have to assemble all of our, um, not conditions, but recommendations. Yes. So one of the recommendations that we could list out is that the, the deed restriction for open space uh, run with the land So any any deed that the town drafts to, to for the sale of the property um, includes that open space restriction. This is Clark. I believe that has to go because that that uh, that's in the deed that it was when it was deeded to us. So we got it without restriction, and that restriction has to carry through. Legally, yeah. I believe. I'm not a lawyer, so that, that's where I'm weak in that respect, but I'm not sure how it all works, but if if it carries through, that's good too. Yeah, I, I, I think he's correct. It, it, it does carry through, but what you say in, to include it in the deed is uh, probably a good idea. Makes yeah. it very clear. I think so it just okay. kind of echoes it, you know? Yeah, that works for me. Does anybody else have any other recommendations to include? The only thing I'd say is will either of these two organizations do a better job than the town's doing in terms of meeting our goals of concert, conserving the space? I guess we're just letting it lie there. We're not doing anything with it. So uh, I suppose it's as natural as it could be. Um, would it be better in somebody else's hands that they might do something with it? Um, looks like you got a couple organizations that, that do that type of thing, apparently. So we would rather see it in their hands. And if so, which one? And then we can make that recommendation. We can do that, Derek. We can kind of recommend which. I don't think that, I don't think you need to do that. Um, I, I guess you could make a recommendation as a group if you would like to do that, but uh, I don't think that was necessarily the intent for you to give direction as to which way council should go. It was just more to um, evaluate if the, if the property is sold, whoever it's to sold to. Um, you know, what, what, what you would be comfortable with as far as what goes with that sale. Like okay. Saying. So Brent, should, are you, would you want to put a recommendation in there about a preference? Uh, Derek is on... kind of steering us against that. So I guess the issue yeah. really then would be would those, either of those operations be better stewards than the town? The... Do we have any plans to do anything like what they're doing, Derek, as far as actively going in and, you know, controlling invasives and that sort of thing? Not, not that I'm aware of. Um, well, we aware technically of don't have thing. access to that property anyways, right? That, that's correct. There's yeah. no way we can, we can get onto that property to do anything, even if we wanted to. Yeah, that's true, too. Okay. So even if the town wanted to go in there to, to you know, improve the ecosystem on the land, then 
we'd have to figure out how to get out there. Wasn't there something in there in the document, and I, and I lost it, I don't have it in front of me, that identified some of the things that each of the groups uh, had done to other properties, and they would potentially yeah. continue that here? Yeah, that's what we were, we were talking about. <laughs> as far as, I think they are controlling invasives and planting, you know, I think Great Meadows, or was it, I forget which one, they kind of actively put native plants in there. Yeah, that, that was the uh, game uh, operation. Talked about uh, taking out invasive plants, putting in the natural ones. I mean, that could be a recommendation from you if, if that's something that you'd like to see done. Um, it's, you know, it's something that, you know, council could consider as part of the discussions with the buyers. Would you guys like to add something like that? Like, you know, our preference or we like that the plans include some sort of invasive species control and, um, you know, replanting with native species. Does that work for you guys? Sure. Okay. Is there anything else we would like to add to it? So I guess it's just those two things. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the referral with the two recommendations? So moved. And then do we have a second on that? I'll second it. So we'll put up two votes, all mm -hmm. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that passes. That's good. Uh, moving on to our second referral of the night. So it's referral number 21-02, Michael Zafina, 19 Justin Lane, parcel number 081-039. It's a referral for discussion and possible action regarding removal of a diseased tree and a conservation easement. So Derek, do you wanna give us some background on this? Or do you wanna have? Um yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just briefly say we town received a, a call that um, someone was concerned that there might be a conservation easement on, on this property um, where trees were a tree or trees were being removed. So staff went out there and uh, investigated what was happening at the site, um, tree warden and someone from my group. Um, it turns out that, as you can see with the application, uh, the tree was diseased and they were taking it down as a safety precaution. Um, so we have the property owner here today just to discuss what uh, what transpired and, and and just get you up to speed with uh, what was happening and why. Okay, and with us tonight, we have Michael Zafina. So if you wanna give us a um, little rundown. Sure, um, you can hear me, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had a uh, um, that succumbed to uh, Dutch Elm disease. Um, it started that great tree, uh, tree care come out with the tree to see if I could save it perhaps. Um, but, uh, but unfortunately it, it was too, the leaves and such were, you know, dying and you could just see the bark just coming right off and you can see where all the pickups and the holes and such. Uh, so it was pretty decayed. Um, trying to remember if it was Isaias, uh, a big, portion of the tree a, a limb came down and it's right near my kids um, play area so so I had uh, you know I, I called uh, Graver tree care again to basically cut the tree down um, because of safety reasons um, uh, 
um, any any other details needed or was there any ground disturbance at all or not not inside the uh, easement and, and actually th this is I, I because when I put my shed in it was act it would obviously that had to be outside of the easement area because I went to the department and made sure all that stuff so, uh, so I mean this tree is really I mean I'd be hard pressed if it is in there but but again I, I did write you know an email saying what I was doing um, and um, you know and again it was done by a professional uh, tree service and yeah, there I am so it's so actually all right yeah there's the shed yeah I just brought this yeah. up so everyone can oh, see fantastic yeah. Yeah. oh okay uh, here's the property this is uh, 19 Justin Lane <clears throat> here's the shed he's referring yeah. to this is our approximate uh, conservation easement line it's you know I wouldn't say it's exact right. so actually that the tree is basically on the line because it's it's right behind the playscape you can see the uh uh, the playscape right there. Yep. Yep. Playscape. Yeah. And this is, this was the tree. Michael? Uh, no, no, it's actually this one, right. Uh, uh it's kind of hard to see it. It, well, I, I guess it is just, it's on the line. Yeah. That that's the one you could kind of see the silhouette of the tree a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's directly in back of the at that place, Gabe. So in, in this area? And, that, and that's the one, yeah. So that was the disease tree that was um, subsequently taken down. Does, okay, so does anybody have any questions? Or comments? Did, did the Derek, uh, you said the tree warden went out. Did the tree or warden have any observations about the condition of the tree? From from my understanding, he, he agreed it was diseased and didn't have. A, he, he wouldn't have had an issue with that coming down for that reason. Let's see. But the, the issue basically is we weren't informed beforehand that this tree was going to be cut down. Yeah, technically, if, if we were aware of it ahead of time, we would have asked the owner to come in to see you to get approval to take the tree down in the easement because of the restrictions. Um, I don't believe he was aware of that or where exactly the easement line is. Like he said, it's pretty close. Um, so we just as a matter of practice, we had him come in and uh, make the presentation now. So I would treat it as if it, you would normally, if it, if it hadn't been done yet, approve or, or you know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, now, like after, the, point, but, after the fact approval. Yeah, but let, you know, at least make you aware of what, why it was done and it wasn't something that was done to, uh, you know, just to clear and make more space for his lot. So, so do we have an application at all, or is this a... You know, this is conservation commission um, agenda item, so... There is none. Yeah, I mean, we really don't have a, a formal application process okay. for that. Yeah, I'm looking at the what was in the packet, and it says he just needs approval in writing by the Inland Wetland and Water Courses Commission. So we would, I guess we could, you know, put together a motion and approve the activity. Now would suffice you that would, you would issue a letter based on that, right, Derek? Yes. Chairman. Yes. I would move it uh, in the name of safety. I know I've got my finger on the space bar continually. Is, it, is that bothering what I'm saying? It sounds like a typewriter. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. I, I would move that uh, 
we give whatever approval is necessary to do an after the fact permit on this in the name of safety. And then do we have a second on that motion? I'll second that, it's Clark. So we'll put it to a vote. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. And that passes. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, qu question, if I have, so, because I'm new to the process, what what is the process? Because um, another tree comes down in a storm or something, and I just want to keep the look of the you know, I did notice in the deed the the uh, you know if there's dead vegetation or or tree down or something. What I mean, do I do like an email and then it come it comes to this to the commission, you know, like on an agenda item and it gets voted just like it was done or yeah, you you would reach out to to Derek. Okay. Uh, he's he's staff for our commission, so just just shoot him an email or a call, whatever you prefer, Derek. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just contact me, okay. and uh, we'll we'll give you some guidance on what's needed. All right. Yep. So that works. Uh, moving on to the general portion, general business portion of the meeting, uh, we have approval of minutes. Uh, I'm trying to see. I think we have enough people to approve it, so we can look at those. Yeah, it looks like Brian uh, was Brian Tachaccio was at that meeting. Um, he's not here tonight. Yeah, if everyone else is. Um, I either we wait till the next meeting or you can approve it as is and then I could follow up with Brian if he's okay with it. Because we've got one, two, three, four. Well, we've got six. So I think we got a quorum enough to approve it, right? Yeah, I'd say go ahead and do that. Okay. So does anybody have any comments on the, the meeting minutes of the last meeting? Nope. So do we have a motion to approve the, the meeting minutes as submitted? So moved. Okay, and then do we have a second on that? I'll second it. So all in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes. And then the last item we have, um, it's a correspondence. There's really no action required. It's Abdullah Enterprises LLC, uh, 1380 Celestine Highway, Rocky Hill. There was a notice of wetlands application for construction of a drive through restaurant within 500 feet of the town line and associated site plan. And I think this was on the the last meeting, I think Derek, you were going to look into to see what was going on with that to see um, what they were proposing. And you're on mute, Derek. Yes, sorry about that again. Um, that's correct. We received the letter that was in your packet again. Uh, we that came in prior to our last meeting in January, right before the meeting. Um, so we reached out to Rocky Hill just to get some more information on what was proposed. Um, and they forwarded us the plan that was included as shown on the screen. Um, this is the existing, I believe it's a Shell gas station that is uh, south of the town line. I guess the proposal that they're reviewing is it looks like to put a drive through uh, around the back of the building with the, uh, with the driveway, with driveway construction. So being within 500 feet of the town line, they're required to notify you uh, yep. of what they're reviewing. Okay. And I think that's about it for the meeting. Um, do you have any information at all on what the town's plans are to maybe go, go back to in-person meetings at all or? And not at this time. Um, my understanding at this point, there, there's no change in the immediate works, but um, I, I believe there are some discussions that are starting to occur with the health department and other municipalities um, to gauge kind of where everyone is, if we're going to start to get back to some normalcy in that respect. Okay. Also, before we go, I just wanted to introduce Don Geit. Did I pronounce that correctly, Don? That's correct. 
she is uh, our new uh, recording secretary. Um, oh, fantastic. Helping us out. So. Welcome nice aboard, Don. Thank you all. Thank you. I I've been getting, oh, I've, ahead, getting a lot of, I've been getting a lot of experience with Weathersfield with all of the minutes that I've been doing thus far. Okay, that sounds good. And then well, um, I explained to Don like we've been doing with a lot of these recorded meetings. I you know I asked her to come tonight so I could introduce her. Um, but what we've done is not re necessarily require uh, them to attend because it is recorded anyway. Um, so she's welcome to, if you'd like, um, future meetings, she may or may not be present, but she, she'll get the recording as soon as it's available and then she can do what she needs to do for the minutes for us. Okay. Right. Welcome aboard. Thank you for, for helping us out. Thank you. And then is there anything else? Nope. Okay. So do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And then do we have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That Aye. Everybody be safe and we'll see you at the next meeting. Okay. You too. Okay. So thank, thank you, everyone. You.